Welcome to the Rekka Stowe Podcast. This is episode number five. I'm your host, John Champion. And this week, I speak with artist, music fan, record collector, and fellow Southeast Raleigh native, David Williams. We talk at a local bar in downtown Raleigh, and we speak on several things. Our discussion includes hip-hop concerts, triangle entertainment legends, the changing face of Southeast Raleigh through gentrification, and so much more. Now, you can hear the show on Apple, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and so many other sites and platforms. Also, don't forget to follow the site's Facebook page, Recosto Podcast, and follow me on Twitter at RecostoPodC1. There's lots of additional content on the Facebook and Twitter sites that you can find every day. Also, we'll put all the links to many of these people, places, songs, and more in the episode description. So make sure you check that out. All right, that interview is coming up with David Williams, man of many talents and many names. We'll check with him right after this break. It's a Record Store Podcast. You're listening to The Champ, hanging out with somebody I really admire, another true music head, the one and only Dave Williams. Dave, how you doing? I'm well, man. How about yourself, man? Man, I'm just trying to be like you when I grow up, come man. Come on, Dave. Man, I envy that record collection <laughs> and your music knowledge, man. You you go back. You know, so oh, yeah. A lot of these, a lot of these songs come from old school beats. They do. Enjoying your stuff, your social media, man, because because you take it back. You really oh, yeah. know what's good. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, up, man. I'm from, I'm the original, the essence. No that's, doubt. That's what I love. The that, roots. That's what I'm screaming. Yeah, man. So you're from southeast, like I'm from southeast. All day, man. Two seven six one zero. That's what. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, man. We were talking a little bit ago, man, about hip hop shows. And people keep coming down on me, they're like, Yeah, let's do the podcast. And I don't hear nothing about no hip hop. Right, you right. know, they so woke they can't go to sleep. But yeah, I know that's I said, right. that's what we somebody that's they're zombies. They zombies. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get something for the zombies. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, go stimulate them. Exactly. Yeah. I'm gonna let them know. I do know some cool folk, man. And, well, like I, I said before, man, a lot of people growing up tried really hard to be cool, yeah. and they just went overboard. <laughs> and I'll never forget, man, there was a teen club. So it, it was either called The Deck or Weekends. I think it was yeah. The Deck at the, deck, the time. Probably. And you stood up in the sunroof of somebody's car, <laughs> and you was waving like the Pope, man. Oh, yeah. People was like, David, David. <laughs> crazy. Man. So it's back in the day. Those definitely, man. So tell me something, man. Yeah. You've seen a lot of hip-hop shows. I have. Tell me something that stick out in your mind for Raleigh, man, or anywhere you've been. Well, for me, what actually stick out is I remember seeing Roxanne Chante at Sports World in wow. Cary. Wow. And Shane K. <laughs> but me, of course, me and my man, bitch, my partner. Super cool, bitch. Yeah. Super cool bitch. You know, cool as the cool. I remember seeing Shantae and her song Roxanne Revenge was big. And um, Shan shook my hand. He had just dropped um, Marley Scratch. And I told Mitch, hey, the devil wash my hair, bro. Right? <laughs> I was loving Shan back then. Um, that was a great show. I remember that seeing her. She might have been the first female MC I ever saw. Right. That was in my age range at the time. You know what I'm saying? And um, I remember Dorton Arena, Run DMC, Curtis Blow, Rockmaster Scott, and Dynamic Three, and One Way. Wow. At Dorton Arena. Pop, what you got? Yeah, 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 Man. yeah. At, at Dorton Arena, that was a. That was an awesome show right there. That was one of my favorite shows. One of my, I like to say, authentic, big, big arena at the time. You know what I'm saying? Because the sports world just a little teeny bop. You know what I'm saying? But, so that was on the bigger scale. I was just like, and Run DMC was super huge Man, at that old, time. It was like, what year do you think that was? I was, um, this had to be 
85. Okay, okay, okay. It just had to be 85. Gotcha. Yeah, 85. Yeah. yeah, it was 85 because Re- Request Line was out. So. Wow. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, that was 85. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was the joint. Yeah, Who did yeah. that song, man? Uh, Rock Master Scott and the Dynamic 3. All right, all right. Charlie Prince and them cats. I love it. I love <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. Not Missy Elliott, but the youngest. That's what I'm saying. You hear that? <laughs> That's it. Yeah, yeah and then, um, gosh, I mean, I haven't seen so many of the shows just, um, of course, that the infamous Fat Boy show. Oh yeah, the, the, tell us about that. No, oh, that was just crazy. <laughs> Me and TJ, uh-huh. Uh-huh. my brother, we we uh, thought we were gonna die in there. <laughs> so many people thought so we were gonna die people. in there. That it? was that was that might have been actually the was the Fat Boys or the Shante show was actually the first two show, first one or two shows I ever went to. Right, right, right. Yeah, then I seen um Public Enemy. Uh-huh. Public Enemy. The real rock scene, Eric B and Rock Hill, EPMD. They was at the um, convention center right. downtown. Okay. Me and DVS put up flyers for that show. They got jerked us too. Oh, we were wow. everywhere. I, gosh, how I wish I had one of those big flyers back then. <laughs> he stayed. He stayed at the um. It was a friendship in it. it was a Runny Ray, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a friendship in it. Uh, and um, me and DB was the street team. Oh, and we nice. went on, Hey, look, we went to Walnut, Terry, Halifax, Terry was like posting up the posters everywhere, man. With a staple gun. Staple gun, I love exactly. It. I love it. For that the probably, culture. That for probably the, wrote all kinds of child yeah, safety yeah, label laws. Yeah, for the culture. Hey, look. For the culture. But that's cool. And, and he ain't really pay us. Go figure, right? Go figure. Go I, figure. Know, I know we put up a hundred. That's why we hit all South Raleigh. I mean, from from one of Terry's back every neighborhood, Bragg Street, it's Martin not like Street. You, it's not like you was driving. Well, DB was driving. Okay, okay, okay. DB was driving, but we yeah. got to jump you on there. Yeah, cats looking like what you doing? Exactly. Yeah, that Gosh, was, that I was gonna have one of the posters. That was new for Raleigh. If it was, you, you should do a Google image search. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll be dope. That's it. I know. I've got an old one of uh, Lance Leitner. And uh, some folks DJing oh, wow. uh, the event for uh, Mr. Freeze. Oh wow! Yeah, oh, wow. I got that. I got that in the scrapbook at the crib. That's cool. That's, That's cool. It, man. That's it. So speaking of records, and uh, Mr. Freeze, man, where did you buy? Buy most of your because you got you got a nice nice collection too. Well, man. it's funny that you say that. Uh-huh. Buying records, I actually believe it or not. Keeping it 1,000, uh, I never really, really went to record stores and bought records. That's cool. I used to just put the word out in the hood. That's cool. That's cool. I know I acquired mine yeah. from older relatives. Yeah, I mean, I got, I got, well, that old well you know, my, my mom had some records. My cousin was into records days in Durham uh-huh. before I was. He still got my mom and pop collection. I want them back. Right, right. My aunt Trisha got some collection. Got some records right now. I want, <laughs> but um, I just put the word out back in the day. That people would, I would buy them a dollar record when people start transitioning to CDs. So I just put the words out. You got any records? Right. Cats are showing up with fifty at a time. I'm giving them fifty dollars. So, but um, actual record stores that I did go to was. Of course, school kids is famous. Uh-huh. Back when it was on Hillsboro. Oh yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah um, yeah. record bar. And I'm trying to remember. We used to go to the one that was in Longview in that corner, oh, I but remember. I can't remember. It was a record exchange, no, or no, what, record what was record? it called? It was run by Mr. Croon, uh-huh. and I think his son is a judge now, and I can't remember the name of it. But I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, right in that in, corner, in the right corner, there. Where, where came the youth, where came the community cab company. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. 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 Record, record something. And then they had one in the tower. Toby had one in the tower. We used to go there, too. But, of course, you know, can't forget the infamous Mr. Freeze. Mr. When I did buy a few, Mr. Freeze. But I mean, my, my core collection, man, really, I got off the street. Just, just putting the word out there. Because I didn't become serious about collecting records. I had a few records. I didn't become serious until about 91. Okay. About 91. Okay. 91. And I, 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 I've seen my collection just grow like, wow. That's what's up. Because you, you put the word out to the right people to be funny. You tell the crackheads. <laughs> 
they know where the vital is. Exactly. I, oh, you want records? They smell vital. That's one. You giving out a dollar record? <laughs> hey, I love it. That's, I love that's it. how I got it. I love it. I love it. I mean, we for real, you know what I'm For real, for real. Huh? Yeah, oh, they go in the basements and everything. They, yeah, I, oh, I know somebody got some records. Some days they might bring five, some days they might have 75. Hey, man, that's uh, <laughs> For the culture. For the culture. We got to do it. Yeah. That's it, man. So that's how that went. And then I got a lot from DVA. I ain't going to front. But DVS gave me a lot. A lot of the hip-hop records. And I have DVS. I got from DVS because he'll be moving. And he don't want to take it. He, he already got what he wants. So. Right, right. So I got a lot from him. And I remember his mom shed. She was like, you got to come get these records. You don't even stay here. <laughs> I like, like, I know who wants them. <laughs> yeah. That's what's up. So all my hip-hop basically come from DVS, the newer hip-hop. Yeah. So that's how I, but you know, I'm really, I'm really, I just like records that I've never heard. Oh, yeah, just finding something new, and and, you know? and I and I still I still find samples to this day. I'll be like, wow. Right. And, and the, the funny thing, how good samples are to me is, I can hear a song like you played that. Um, who was the group the other day? I said that's Donald Um, uh, who was that? Uh, was that I played? Led Zeppelin. Yep, 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 yep. yep. Ramble on, my Led Zeppelin. Never heard the song in my life. Wow. When I played it and I heard it immediately, I said, that's Donald D. Nice. And it's a lot of songs I know from the hip hop version. And then I stumbled across the original and it blows my mind still to this day. I'm like, and that's the whole purpose. Yeah. I mean, put the podcast together and the Facebook and Twitter, everything. I just want people to discover stuff maybe they hadn't heard before. Right. And I appreciate your support. No doubt. For, for, for liking stuff, commenting, and, and asking other people to check it out. Oh, yeah. For sure, man. Most definitely. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, mean, I, I like these all, all. If it moves me, I groove with it. I don't care. I don't care who made it. That's what's up. That's what's I don't up. care who made it. Man, have you done the artist thing as far as have you tried to get into? I know you. I know you do. Uh, you say you do art. You like yeah, to draw. Yeah, yeah I'm a graffiti artist. That's what's up. Yeah, yeah, I've always been that. That's what's up, man. Have you, Early have, age. Have you have you played with with music at all? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I used to rap. I, I didn't, didn't know. Hey, look, know. it's funny. Yeah, it's, that's very funny. You never do. Yeah. yeah I went through a bunch of names um, back then growing up. Um, oh, yeah, I was an MC, And I don't call myself a DJ because that's a certain dedication you got to have to be a DJ. I'm just a guy that loves music. Right. I'm a music lover. They're like, why don't you DJ? I'm like, no, nah, man. I've seen people. Hey, look, and I could be wrong, but from my observation of a, a for real DJ, that's all he do. I ain't never met a guy that was a good DJ and was played on the basketball team or the football team. It's crazy dedicated to the music. You know what I'm saying? There you go. You gotta be. You know what I'm saying? I never have. I never have. Yeah. Yeah, because you gotta have your head, your ear to the street. Yeah, yeah. You gotta. I mean, you gotta wake up on them turntables in that room, mastering the craft. But I used to rap. Um, back in the day, I was um. MC Dell. Okay, okay. DVS was DJ Smooth then. So we've we always been in the crew. And I changed my name to Dave C. Like I can never found, you know, there, Dave C. Right. And um, the name DVS actually comes from me and him as a group. I didn't know DV, that. You know what I'm saying? Man, that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. That's what's up. And then I left and he just kept the name. Man, that's what's up, man. Yeah. That's what hey, look, my number one song back there that was a, a, a hood classic was, um, I had a song called Francine, about Francine Bryant. <laughs> <laughs> Off LLs, I can give you more. I love it. Man, I love yeah. It. And she's like, you always say that, like, she never heard it. Wow. <laughs> but everybody heard it in the hood. Everybody <laughs> liked heard. it, yeah. Oh, that's what's up, yeah. man. Yeah, so, I, so I actually took the, um, that route of, I was, I, I, I was a, Artist first, uh -huh. an MC. You know, I was never a good break dancer, B boy. I could pop a little bit, but get on the ground. I could windmill. If you can windmill, you're not really a breaker. I hear you. you know I, hear you. <laughs> I lived that life too. Yeah, there, there you go. go. There you but go. then I got into the music, gradually. All of it's from the music, though. Oh yeah. That forms it for me. That's what's up, man. That is what's yeah. up, man. I was gonna say, uh, and there's so many. There's so much. The roots. The roots of classic hip hop. There's so much oh, yeah. history 
right here in our area, man. And Definitely. Guys that, that I grew up listening to, you know, I'm staying up late at night, you know, with the radio, the boom box, yeah. on low volumes I can tape on yeah. WKNC. School night. Exactly, man. <laughs> listening Sunday to uh, Wax Master Tory, uh, yeah. rest in peace. That's and, right. Uh, you so, know, so Tory. Exactly. Tory, Tory, Tory. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, all that. Um, okay. And another guy who doesn't get, like I always tell him, the legend of me. Wink Moody. Oh yeah, I love him. Wink Moody man. started it. No doubt. Wink Moody started him and DJ Meatball. Yeah. I'm listening to them in '82, '83. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Definitely. Before Tory even came on the scene, man. So exactly. people, the people kind of leave Wink Moody out of out the conversation about hip hop because he wasn't a, he didn't really, you know, he was a personality. He didn't do hip hop, so you know, Tory did hip hop. I know me and DV used to um. Wax Master Tory. Exactly. We used to go to um. Went to a couple of shows with him and Sound Machine oh, yeah. between like Hillsboro, Roxboro oh, back in the day. Oh, yeah. They're doing um open duck season. Right. But yeah, Wink Moody definitely. definitely. But he brought hip hop to your house on the radio oh, yeah. for me. Exactly. Mr. Freeze, you know what I'm saying? He made the shows for his, for his kids so we could see it. You know what I mean? Exactly. So Freeze, you know, he, he gets his props. A lot of Wink Moody don't get his props. He's he's like the he's like the Marley Mall of a Raleigh. Oh yeah, and he's still on the radio. Yeah. He's still doing his thing. Yeah. Weekends on yeah. Fox 107, 107. Yeah. Much love and respect. Wink yeah. Moody, old dude. No I, did a, I did a drop for him on WLLE. Okay. <laughs> oh man, that was the, that, mm -hmm. that was it, man. That's where and that's where growing up in Raleigh. That's where I first. No, I'm sorry. I take that back. I take that back. Well. It was a toss up. It was uh, a toss up. I think they both played it. Rapper's Delight. Yeah. I don't know if I heard it first on WLLE AM 57. Man, I used to love them jingles too. Yeah, yeah. AM 57. Yeah, yeah. L L E. <laughs> Man, they were the bomb. WKIX, the AM pop station. KIX. Because it wasn't no FM. Yeah. Yeah, I'll show my age. I don't yeah, mind. It's okay. They played Rappers Delight. They played the full version. Yeah. You know, Ooh, and we would, we, man, I would burn it. Hey, play that again. Play that again. Play it. I can't play it again, son. That's yeah. eight minutes long. Yeah. I'll play it again. Four hours. Yeah. So, that's funny that you say that. Because Rappers Delight was, was cool and it was the first recorded rap song. Uh -huh. But the song that actually got me to want to become a rapper, but uh -huh. I looked at it and it was like, I can do this, was Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five song, It's Nasty. People say it's dirty, people say it's wrong. Now who did that? It's a, it's a Tom Tom song originally, uh -huh. but um, Tom Tom, Tom Tom, you know there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Tom Tom, Tom Tom Club. Tom, Tom Club. Doing, uh, yeah. Genius uh, of Love. Genius of Love. Right, right. Okay, okay. But um, that song is nasty by Flashing Them. Gotcha. Chief Keith Cowboy. God bless the dead. Right. It was the first rap song I learned. Wow. Yeah, he like, and he said, I'm cowboy. I'm the real McCoy. I'm chopped it all over like an armor joint. Bow legged, cool brother. Yeah, you must agree. On top of the world for the ladies to see. I learned, I knew that rap. And I said, I can do that. He made me believe that I can do that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, keep cowboy. I love it. Run DMC one out yet. I love it. Yeah, that was. That was when they stamped it that I could do it, but he made me believe I could do it. You know what I understand. <laughs> For me. Yeah, that's it. That, that was the it. verse. That was the first rap song that I I knew the verse, like, Damn. felt it, embodied it. You know what I mean? I dig it. I'm, I'm with yeah. you. I understand. For me, it had to be Sucker MC. And the, and, yeah. the, and the connection to that is funny. You talk about being cool, being accepted, mm -hmm. you know, feeling comfortable around your friends, around yeah. people. When I rode the bus, uh, middle school, mm -hmm. uh, Biltmore Hills, going to Ligon, we had to share a bus with the kids from Emma. Okay. And those were the meanest kids yeah. in the world. Yeah. Boy, look, they would make us stand up. <laughs> so, we had, so the only way you could get a seat yeah. is if they liked you. Right. Right? So... I'm already a marketing genius at 1982, 83. <laughs> I yeah. said to my dad, man, you got to get me a boom box. Gotcha. He said, what? Get me a boom box. Yeah. He bought me a boom box. So I get on the bus with a boom box. 
these guys, man, uh, Cody, I don't remember his last name, and I want to say, man, Greg, these guys were like juniors and seniors when I was in the sixth grade. Mm -hmm. These brothers. Right, brother. Okay, be good. These brothers were like, hey, oh, you with the radio. Bring ass back here. Yeah, yeah. Come on, you can sit with me. In the back. You can sit down right here in the back. <laughs> yeah. With the big boy. Yeah. Yes, sir. You got some good music in there? Anybody got a tape? And I had to stay up all night taping, you know, off WKMC, mm -hmm. Magic 88. Yeah, right. That's it, man. And yeah, so man. I had the jams, and I had Sucker MC. Sucker that, MC. Boy, we dancing all the way, 7 in the morning. That bus rocking all the way down to Urban Avenue. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, oh, yeah, boy, you can have a you, That's you beautiful. Sit That's beautiful. You get on that bus without that radio, you stand your ass up today. How dare you get yeah. on this bus without Music that Music will radio. get you places. That's it. <laughs> 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 and it would get you a seat on a long ass bus. Ride. Yeah, right. <laughs> Still will. No the doubt, right music. Man. For real. And we were talking, man, about Raleigh and. You want another blood orange? Twist my arm, yes. Yeah. We're hanging out at the London Bridge pub. Yeah. That's it. That's live, it. Live, live. Everything's live. That's why we don't dress up. Yeah. That's, <laughs> it. That's it, man. Yeah. Glad to be talking to Dave, man. We, we were talking earlier, man. Mm -hmm. About the changes we're seeing in Raleigh. Thank you so much, man. Yeah. Man, and, you know, rapidly, rapidly, man. And, and like I said, I I see it in other communities, and now I see it here. Yeah. And you know, you you still in the zip code? You still in yeah. two seven six one zero? Mm -hmm. So, what what do you what do you see, man? What do you see happening around you rapidly? I'm seeing people sell their houses, man. Sell their parents and grandparents' houses. For little or nothing. My whole thing is fix them up yourself and get top dollar. Exactly. <laughs> if you're going to sell them, don't sell them for 80, 90,000. Somebody else buy your property, put 25, 30,000 to it, and make them $100,000. Exactly. You can do the same thing. That's all I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, it's just that simple mathematics. Exactly, man. And we were, I was telling you about, you know, my background as far as now that I've spent a lot of time in uh, Southern Wake County around land that would have been, yeah. you know, yeah. probably my yeah. land yeah. by this time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that seeing, was. Yeah. Exactly, seeing places that my grandparents sold for next to nothing right. and, you know, so much land, it could be a subdivision. Yeah. Hey, damn, they gave it away. They gave it away. You know, and, and, and I'm just seeing, I'm seeing so much, so much wealth that I'm like, yeah. damn, that's, that's a generation. You know, yes. Forget you know. rich wealth. <laughs> For real. <Yeah. laughs> For real. Right. Exactly. And you know, and it, it and it bothers me. Like I say, I'm, I'm looking around here, and I'm just I'm seeing all the change, and I'm seeing you know, Raleigh's always voted best place to live, yeah. best place to move. Should, should have known it was coming. You know, <laughs> every time, yeah. uh, every time an article comes out, they talk about you know how much. You know, great jobs, great opportunities, but I just get kind of a, especially what I've gone through, you know, working for the same company for so long and not being treated the way I would expect to be treated, mm -hmm. you know, I, I kind of feel like, you know, the, there's changes and all this stuff, but I feel like it's not for us. Right. You know, I feel like, you know, I, and I really don't know how to make people understand that, hey man, land and it's a good thing to have property is a good thing to have I'll tell you something I drove that, that's the one thing they're not making no more yeah <laughs> land exactly you can get all the newest cars you want yep they ain't making no more land yeah <laughs> <laughs> they can make a plant based whopper yeah. they ain't making no more damn land right exactly yeah, yeah. and it, it blows my mind man because I really I, I really worry about you know, just like me and you are sitting here talking about, you know, the legacy, the root right. of, you know, good music and, you know, and while we can't talk about every person, everybody, man, there were so many good people that impacted us and affected us along the way. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, and we can, we can tell our family members, we can tell our kids, but no, no, you look around and the landmarks are just long. Yeah. Speaking of legacy. It's funny and it's sad, and this is some in-house stuff being in um, now Worthdale, the neighborhood I grew up in. 
I've been there since 71. Right? I remember growing up and it was some white people stayed there. They all took flight in the 70s. So Workdale became a thriving black neighborhood. I remember this. And it was a beautiful thing. And you know, by no means do you like the house, buy it. That's all I'm saying, but where's going to be, what's, when is it going to be just a, let me see, this is a tricky thing how I'm trying to say this. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm I grew up in black neighborhood. I don't think that's going to exist no more in 15, 20 years. I don't think it's going to be, if, it's, if it is, it's going to be an apartment complex and you ain't owning that shit. Excuse me. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm you ain't owning that. Yeah. That's crazy. It's not gonna be in it. Any black neighborhood in Raleigh. Yeah. 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 Honestly. Yeah. Right. Bit more hills. Kingwood. Wordsdale. All out high. South K. Yeah. It's, it's like it's like it almost got painted. It's a, and, I, and I'll say this. It's like Southeast has always been painted with like a black with a, with a bad brush. Like, they make it sound like, oh, well, if this is Southeast Raleigh, then you know, ain't nothing good going on over there. You know, they're lucky to make it out alive. I mean, and, and I can't understand why, you know, it's like there just hasn't been, why don't they have a Walmart? Why don't, why don't they have, you know, so many strip malls with, you know, put a department store over there. You know, we a trillion dollar economy. You know, yeah. we spend a whole lot of money yeah. on clothes and cars and good yeah. stuff. I mean, they could develop, people could develop that area and build great things and yeah. build attractions. But, you mark, know. Mark just, my words, the Tower Shopping Center will be thriving in 12 years. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, if not, if not so. There's going to be a fitness center up there. Oh, yeah. Where the Hammers was. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mark my words. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, exactly, and a CBD store before once, that. Once they know. get them, once they get rid of them, them, as they like to say, the crack motels. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Cheap motels. Yeah. 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 That's it. Yeah. That's it. Coming. My, but, fa my favorite thing to do is drive through the parking lot of those and see the unsuspecting family yeah. from like Kansas or Nebraska yeah. who just didn't understand that they just booked a night nice stay with their wife and kids at a Craigslist motel <laughs> and the micro <laughs> Somebody got a couch outside. <laughs> but speaking about legacies, this is when people are not connected to so what's been there. Now, this is a prime example. Brookdale Center. A lady came in there seven, eight years ago from Wilmington. Uh -huh. And threw away our trophies. What? Community truck had them in the closet, threw them away. What? Because, well, we need a bigger trophy case. Well, you should have got with the community. We could have bought a bigger trophy case. Yeah. But you ain't got no time for it because you don't know nothing about Oscar Miller or, you know, the baseball team. We had the baseball teams up there that had trophies. Exactly. You know, so. Yeah. Because you, you don't have a connection. I had an Because you're from play. Wilmington. You know what I'm saying? You don't have a connection with the neighborhood. Yeah. So. That's crazy. Man, that's ridiculous. That's so sad. That would never happen in Arthur McFall. Never. <laughs> never. Uh, never, never. <laughs> yeah, they, they got they got bridges built and they uh, have to have the people. Uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, I agree, man. And I I don't know I don't know what needs to be done to make people you know want to want to take a greater stand and, and not just give away. You know. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't give away. That's, that's my whole thing. Don't give it away. Get, get top dollar. Stop yeah. stop selling for bottom dollar. Exactly. Exactly. If you already own your house and they want to give you ninety thousand dollars for it, go get a loan for thirty thousand and get the work done and sell it for two ten. Exactly. That's all. That's all. That right? Oh no. I get it. Oh, it's a fan. Oh, no, I think it came. Oh, I was like, I was like, wow, is that right? That's it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, man. I. Uh... That's my whole thing. It'll be a difference if they was coming through giving you, you know, fix. If you want to sell, fix your house up and get get all the value for it. Love it. That's Love all. It. That's all I want. That's all. If you go, if you happen to have to sell or want to sell, not have to, but if you want to sell, get your loan. If you already own your house, get your loan, fix it up yourself, and get top dollar. Man, 
man, look, I gave a ride to some people that, uh, and I was trying to figure out where they got their money. I gave a ride to some people that live uh, near Holly Springs. Right. And I'm not making this up. Serious story. I'm trying my best to find their house. The GPS took me to a Hampton Inn, mm-hmm. right? So I'm in the Hampton Inn, and I'm calling them. Okay, we ready to? I'm ready to pick you up. I'm, I'm here at the entrance. They're like, no, we're in the house that butts up to the Hampton Inn. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Right. And they get in the car, and they are the, the, the nicest, sweetest country, yeah. you know, yeah. southern, southern country white folks. Right. Very nice. And they just start explaining to me. Oh yeah, yeah, we travel all the time. And I see why. I know why. Because you sold your property to Hampton Inn. Right. And they did yeah, we just got back from Africa. And they look like I did God bless them. No, nothing against them. They look like they had, if you looked at them and listened to them a little while, you'd be like, they ain't never been outside of Apex Island Springs. Right. Right. But they, they surprised me and they were real cool. Yeah. And as we you know, I'm taking them to their next destination. Oh yeah, we just bought this land right here. We just we just bought this. Because when you got land, when you got that capital, you can get another loan. You can. Hey, look, I, well, look. I know what it says on my bottom line, yeah. but let me show you what I just bought. Right. So. Yeah, you get that real money. You got that you get real, that real money. money. You get that real money loan. Exactly. We don't care you got that Mercedes Benz outside. Exactly. We're going to give you $5,000. Exactly. <laughs> Let you borrow 5000 exactly. My car worth 18 grand. Exactly. But you got some acres. <laughs> you got some acres. Yeah. 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 We, we just got to um, make the most of what we got and stop selling, selling ourselves out short. Yeah. That's all it is. That's, it. That's my whole thing. Because I've seen the neighborhood, man. I mean, and I welcome everybody. Oh, yeah. No doubt. No doubt. I welcome everybody. I just want my people to stop selling their people's cribs. Exactly. For the for the low. Because you got nothing, you know. For the low, and then you're gonna be mad if you sell it for eighty five thousand dollars, ninety thousand, hundred thousand dollars, and somebody tell you they put twenty five grand in it and sold it for two hundred thirty thousand dollars. You could have did that. Exactly. Then they make some more investments. Yeah. And they still make it money. Yeah. Off yeah. what was Yeah, yeah. Yours. They, they take that same hundred thousand they gave you and go get another one. Yeah. Cause we're the only side of town ever. And I mean now I'm thinking about it. I've been seeing cash for homes for fifteen years. That, those times been up a long <laughs> time, man. I used to be like, oh, They've been up a long time. Cash for homes. Handwritten. Yep. Not even yep. professional yep. sign. I'll yeah. buy your house. Yeah. Exactly. Cash. Cash. Yep. I'll bring the suitcase to you. Yeah. <laughs> I still get stuff in the mail every day. Me too. Yeah. Try to get the crib. Use my truck. Exactly. Exactly. For real. Yeah, take the pictures, call and everything. I'm like, wow. Wow. That's it. Yeah, I want to flip my property. The whole bottom line is flip your own property. Yeah. If you're going to sell. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And Stop being the low man on the total phone. There's lots of resources, and I'll put some links up yeah. for some folks that you can talk to. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Well, that's all it is. And, um, like, you know, and I work up the street to where I stay at. Hey, so I see everybody, and they come in the neighborhood, and I be like, oh, and, uh, I'm observing. I'm always looking because I'll be around. Right. Ask the customers come in. But then I was like, oh, I said, that tree almost tore y'all house up, didn't it? They said, you stay in the neighborhood? I said, I am the neighborhood. You know what I mean? And that's I, she, said, she said, we've been there 13 years. I said, I remember when you moved in. Yeah, Let me tell you whose house that was. That was Derrick Jackson's house. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mr. Mrs. Jackson's house. He's the DJ in the bottom of there, the basement right there. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's it. I said, she said, that tree fell this way. I said, yeah. Luckily, it did. It could have fell the other way. Yeah. Y'all have been like, like you standing there? I said, yeah. You've been there 30. I said, I remember when you moved in. Wow, <laughs> man. So, you know. Definitely, man. That's, that's beautiful, I'm man. I'm saying that. So, they, you know, I'm going to be here. Right. I just got some new neighbors. They're cool. They're from, from Connecticut. Not right now. They're from Connecticut. And um, my other neighbors, they're from Maryland. Okay. Cool people. That's cool. That's cool. I'm gonna have to get over there one Friday though. I think they live on Friday. Oh have my to, goodness. We have to knock on the door. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, see what's really going down. Yeah, let me, let me you, you can find out on the Friday. Exactly. <laughs> Everybody lets me go on Friday. You can find out on the Friday now. You can find out who your neighbors are on the weekend. Oh, you know what I'm saying? 
man. Oh, okay, that you plant trees outside. Uh-huh. Got a garden. We know who's in Friday night, gonna let me know when I come in that house. Exactly. What you been working for all week? <laughs> What's that smell? I heard Bob Marley and Johnny Kemp. Wait a second. Who knew? Like, who knew? Who knew y'all was over here playing Meek Mills? I love you. You never let it. You never let me know. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Look, man, I really enjoyed talking to you. Thanks for, thanks so much, man. I mean, this is the best interview I've done. Except for the one with my girlfriend. But um, this is the best interview I've done. I want to go drive with your girlfriend. Tell your girlfriend I want let's go bombing. I got I got twenty two cans of paint oh, right man. now. Oh man, look, she'll put a hoodie huh? on. She'll be right out there with you. She uh she tell us, yeah. Very creative. Very I, creative. Hey look, that microphone is beautiful. Man. I love. It. I think I was reading the comments. Somebody said she drew you on the white. So that's awesome. Man, that's awesome. I want to put it on the shirt. Man, go ahead. I do. And, I, and look, if you want to put it on the shirt, I need some people walking around wearing shirts. Yeah, so I, I, I get it with you, man. We'll, we'll make it work for you yeah. and for me too. Yeah, that's I it. Like it. That record stuff. The record stuff. <laughs> Thank your wife, man. Yeah. Thank your family, will. man. That no will. doubt. Appreciate everybody. No everybody doubt. support, man. No yes. doubt. Listen to the record stuff podcast. And that's going to do it for this episode five of the Record Stow podcast. I really hope you enjoyed it. Now, you can listen on the web. You don't need an app to hear and share this show with your friends. We're on Apple, Google, Stitcher, Spotify, Breaker, Overcast, and Radio Public. Follow the show on Facebook and Twitter. And you'll find links to many of the songs that Dave and I discussed and many more things. You'll find them in the show description. So follow those links. Also, I want to take this time to say the show episode is dedicated to the late Miss Evelyn Bow, who passed away on August 20th. A kind, loving, and great friend to all. Much love and respect to the Bow family. Thanks for listening to the Record Store Podcast. <laughs>